Hey everyone, welcome back to Make It Happen Mondays, where we talk about sales, business, entrepreneurship, personal growth, mental health, and everything in between with guests who I truly respect and I think make a positive impact on the world around us. And today's guest is Jeremy Chen. Now, Jeremy Chen runs his own sales organization, sales training organization, as a matter of fact, and he focuses on cold calling. And I figured this would be a good opportunity. I haven't done a tactical uh, podcast in a long time. And because cold calling is one thing that I am not seeing reps do anymore at all because they are scared to death of the phone, I thought it'd be good to get somebody who lives and dies on the phone to talk about what's working and what's not these days. So we talk about super tactical things. Look, if you're not making cold calls, um, but cold calling should be part of your game, this is a great episode to get tactical on. If you are making cold calls, hopefully this gives you some new ideas on things to think about. So hope you enjoy this conversation and let's make it happen. Jeremy Chen, welcome to the Make It Happen Monday podcast. How are you, my friend? Hey, listen, any day above ground is a great day. Thanks for having me. Yeah, these days, that's uh, that, that's uh, more true than you know. Um, so, Jeremy, we are going to, uh, you know, I haven't done a, a super tactical episode in a while here, so I'm looking forward to this conversation, specifically around cold calling, because there's a lot of talk about it, and there's all sorts of AI stuff that's happening and creeping into our world here. So we're going to get super tactical with today's conversation. But before we do that, Jeremy, let's talk a little bit about, give us your background. Talk to us about where you're coming from and what you're up to these days. Oh, man, my background. Uh, well, I started as a door-to-door salesperson for a telecom company. Worked my way up to, you know, top performer on the team. Uh, went on to become an executive and then left there, been on my own ever since. Founded Jeremy Chen Sales. It's um, doing a lot of sales enablement f- folks for the guys that are f- following me now when it comes mm-hmm. to uh, business development and sales process. So that's what I'm up to these days. Love it. Love it, man. So, I mean, and, and would you say your special out of all the sales stuff that you do with clients and, and what you're doing, you, would you say that kind of your specialty is the cold call? Um, I mean, obviously there's a lot of sales, but is it, is kind of for you, is it the focus on the cold calling? It is. I focus a lot on lead generation and the way I do it is through the cold call for sure. hundred percent. Yeah. So you're one of those that is an advocate for it, obviously, right? Because not only do you do it, you train it and, and you work with your clients on it where, you know, the majority of the population right now is fuck cold calling, right? It doesn't work. I can't get through. Uh, you know, the connect rates are abysmal. Uh, nobody wants to talk to me. So, so let's unpack that and prove us wrong here. Like what, cause I, cause look, do I, I used to make 400 dials a week, you know, for five years of my life. And I made a lot of money and a lot of relationships off of cold calling. And this was, but this was back in early two thousands. Right. Um, and this is when email wasn't really that big of a thing it was it was a thing but but phone was still without question the number way one way of communicating with people and i think you know you hear a lot of people say cold calling is dead and all this other shit and and i think it is industry specific in a lot of ways but talk to us about some of the stuff that you're seeing out there we're going to talk to the tactics but i, I want to hear from you about where you're seeing success right and is it with specific industries is it with specific people or is it just because you're doing it you're seeing far better results than the people that don't well you know what i think that it's undeniable that right now things are economy wise are headed a little bit south i think um you're seeing a little a little bit of a a turn in the economy for sure if i can say that but it just means that there's less noise to contend with, right? You got to think we're just coming out of COVID and you touched on it. There's a ton of email going on. There's tons of ads. There's tons of this, tons of that. AI is a brand new thing. And I'm sure it's going to disrupt somebody's industry. In my opinion, there is nothing that beats calling somebody cold and saying, Hey, listen, I might have something good for you. Okay. Um, Industry agnostic. I can, you know, dial for insurance one day and put down the phone and and dial for some software product the next day. It makes no difference. Um, You know, I'm still putting out 100, 200 calls a day and getting my, you know, anywhere between nine and sort of 22 pickups and some conversations. And I'm not here to paint a rosy picture. I mean, 
people still tell me to fly a kite every other day and that's fine yeah. that's part of the game um yeah. but i still think your fastest path to revenue your cheapest path to revenue um even if you're doing some due diligence you want to find out about a market what better way to pick up mm-hmm. the phone and call somebody you don't know so i'm doing it right now and i'm seeing success yeah. with it all right so so with i mean because i think one of the bigger challenges that people see is you know uh, is is just pure connect rates right because it's always difficult like i think there's once you have somebody on the phone there's some tactics that we'll talk about as far as keeping them on the phone engaging the conversation and and you know and try to to your point least path resistance from a revenue standpoint because you have that person right there you don't have to go back and forth five times over email to figure this out what are with the 150 dials are you using call dialers are you using just old school from your standpoint phone and and from a connect rate standpoint how are you trying to optimize your connect rate uh like where are you getting those lists where are you getting that information so that you can really make sure that it is the 10 to 15 percent at least pickup rate right because that's what's so demoralizing is you make 100 dials in a day and nobody even picks up the fucking phone so how are you addressing the, the that part of it well there's a big shift right now and the one thing i'll tell you and i think personally a lot of people are making mistakes that i talk to is they think that calling people's cell phones is where it's at i can tell you conclusively Dang. right now i talk to the majority of my people on their extension on their direct line at work Right. So I call him at work and and dial 234, has to speak to John and connect with John. Uh, Mm -hmm. Cell phones, in my experience, and this is across sectors, right? Uh, I'm not talking about any specific sector here, but um, cell phones only account for 24% of my conversations, period. So I think that people need to sort of um, be retrained that COVID is sort of. Um, in the background a little bit right now Mm -hmm. and people are doing business over the phone and you can connect with with uh, people on their office phone they're picking it up right now now do you find that when people pick up on their cell phone they're actually more annoyed or and or pissed off about the call than a regular through the you know dial system um it's about 60 40 it depends you know because uh Mm -hmm. somebody will answer their cell phone they're on vacation they're at a funeral um they're doing yeah. something that has nothing to do with work sometimes and you catch them at, a, at an awkward spot and you do get that, you know, how'd you get my cell phone? Why are you calling me? I think that's part of the yeah. game. Um, yeah. I've booked appointments with those style conversations and I book appointments with uh, folks that have told me, you know what, I would have never talked to you if you didn't call my cell phone. So it's about yeah. a 60, 40, if I'm being honest with you. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause I know for me, like, you know, it's funny. I <laughs> I love people who get mad uh, when they pick up their cell phone and it's a cold call. It, it, it always cracks me up because it's like, dude, you knew my name didn't show up on your phone. Like you knew this was an unknown number. You knew like, and don't tell me you thought it was somebody else. Shut up. Like if you thought it was somebody else, you would have had them on your phone. So come on. Right. And and I think that's where I think that the the first five to 10 seconds of any call to me is is. In, in a lot of ways, the most critical, right? Because how do you get over that initial intro to, because uh, everybody's, ah, crap, a cold call, right? Like that's unfortunately, you know, at least the mentality for most. So how do you structure your calls, right? So so when you, I mean, there's, I we look at it from a training standpoint when we work with our clients, you know, we break down the cold call into different sections, like literally the first five seconds, like what do you say in the first five to 10 seconds that earns you another 30 seconds maybe where you can tell them what you're, you know, why you're calling and those type of things. And that 30 seconds earns you another minute or two where you can ask some questions and maybe go from there. And then that earns you the discovery call. So we kind of look at it in those sections. How do you look at um, a call structure, if you will, and how do you break it down? And then let's start unpeeling each section of it, specifically that intro. Yeah. So, I mean, in the introduction, I have found it's easiest if I do what's called a pattern interrupt where I'm just straight up up front with somebody and it sounds probably something like this John I'm going to be honest hey it's a it's a sales call and you're mm-hmm. welcome to hang up on me or maybe give me 30 seconds to let me explain why I'm calling you right now mm-hmm. a lot of people have argued with me about why they don't love it and that's fine it's not for everybody mm-hmm. my personal mm-hmm. take on it my hot take on it 
is, listen, I want to disqualify you in 30 seconds. It just means I can get back on the phone and talk to somebody else that I have a real shot with, right? Yep. I'd hate to dance with somebody who's really not my dancing partner. So, you know, mm-hmm. if they take the opportunity and listen, I made calls even this morning, I made some calls um, and, and got hung up on. That's fine by me. It absolutely is, mm-hmm. is part of the game, right? So you give them that yep. easy out and just tell them, hey, 30 seconds, uh, it is a cold call. Feel free to hang up. I'll explain why I'm calling, see if it's a fit. Yeah, nice. I Yeah, I like the permission based as well. It's kind of like, you know, instead of diving right into it, I was taught early in my career, unfortunately, to to literally just dive right in. Like, don't even let them breathe, right? It's like, hey, Jeremy, th- you know, thanks for picking up. The reason I'm calling is blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and I'd love to talk to you, see if we can get some. And I tried it. It was funny. Um, you know, the company I worked for, Basho, they that was their thing right so that was their approach and i i remember being like this doesn't feel right um but hey i'm new training i I gotta do this right and i and i actually purposely did it 100 times 100 times and i got interrupted 100 times i got a hundred people to say i'm sorry who is this what do you want like halfway through my "Ah, the reason i'm calling is that so I like, I do like the permission based where it's like, Hey, can I get 30 seconds to weigh? I'd like, I, I have a similar approach where I'll say, Hey, can I get 30 seconds to tell you why I'm calling before you hang up on me? Right. And I, and I, you know, assuming you want to hang up on me, but all I'm like I said, is I, I just want to sell each stage. Like I want to sell th- in those five seconds. I'm trying to sell 30 seconds and it was 30 seconds. I'm trying to sell two minutes. Basically. I'm not trying to sell my product or service. I'm trying to sell the next step. So when somebody says, sure, Jeremy, now with that amount of dials that you're doing, how much of those, how many of these calls are like tailored because you know that person, you've done a little bit of homework on them and you have a very specific reason to call that person specifically versus more of a kind of relevance approach because you're calling into a certain persona and you have kind of a talk track around that persona. So what's your, what's your mix between personalization and relevance? Yeah, you know what? That's a great question. I lean towards relevance. I'm not a heavy research guy. Uh, before um, you call them. Um, and the philosophy behind that is pretty simple. You got to remember, this is a cold call we're doing. It's not mm-hmm. uh, a pitch or, you know, we're not crafting a proposal to send these guys cold, right? So um, I would like to do all my, what I call sleuthing or digging for pain while I'm actually on the call, right? Because half the time you do right. all that research up front, they don't pick up anyway. And then, you know, it's time right. wasted. So I just go for a relevance because I know who the persona is. I generally know two or three buttons that'll push them. And Mm -hmm. when I'm on the call, it's simple. You know, I'm digging for pain. And if I don't get anything, I'm out of there faster than they can kick me out. And I tell them that on the call. Yeah. How do you tell them that? Like, is it like, do you set the stage with like pseudo upfront contract that says, look, I got a few questions for you here. You know, from there, it'll be pretty clear whether it makes sense for us to take the next step. Like, how do you, how do you put them at ease? Because what I find is, is if you start interrogating people, right? So you say they give you that 30 seconds and then you just dump into just like looking for pain, but it's more of an interrogation. Well, what do you do for this? And what do you do for that? What do you do for this? Like after like three or four of those questions, they're like, look, dude, could you just, well, like, what do you got? Like, just give me your pitch. So how do you permission base? Like say somebody says, sure, Jeremy, all right, I got 30 seconds. You caught me. Like, what do you want to talk about? Like, what's, what's the next step from there for you? So it's typically tailored to whatever demographic that I'm talking to. So as an example, I was calling into agriculture um, this afternoon, actually. And I just simply say, hey, been working with a bunch of farms. Here's what I'm hearing from other customers that we've served. What are you upset with, if anything, um, when it comes to XYZ, ABC, right? And if they hit on something, I generally tend to flow with the conversation, right? Got now, it. there's a point in this after to your to your question here, about three, four questions in, I'll say, look, John, you gave me more than my 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. I want to ask you some more questions, but I'd probably take more of your time. So, if you have your calendar open, I'd love to book, you know, 10, 15 minutes as a discovery. If at that point, there's something I can help you with, I'll let you know. If there isn't anything, I'll be out of there faster mm-hmm. than you can kick me out. And people genuinely genuinely if they're interested like that approach Mm -hmm. because they realize that i'm valuing my time just as much as theirs um 
you yeah. know, your prospects can tell when you're desperate. It comes across in right. your voice. You know, there's nothing worse than you calling up somebody and saying, hey, please take this appointment. My manager's breathing down my neck. I really need this one. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, and I always tell my salespeople, I say, look, just relax. You have it all in there. Right? So mm -hmm. um, stick with the permission-based approach and realize not everybody's going to be your customer. But when you find one, when you find one, do a great job mm -hmm. of, of doing your job. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the, the, I think the relevance factor is critical because too many reps I know, you know, for instance, I tell people all the time, like I see clients that'll do like call blitz days, you know what I mean? Where it's like, Hey, it's a cold call day today. It's like, well, let's hit the century club or whatever the hell it is. And I always cringe on that. Cause I'm like, sorry, like there ain't enough Red Bull out there to get me hyped up for a day's worth of cold call. You know what I mean? So, but, but hours, right. I, I do power hours, right. Well, I'll pick an hour and I'll just go to work. But the problem that I find with a lot of clients is when they do that power hour scenario that they bring their lists, like their reps bring their lists and their lists are typically all over the place. You know, it's like a VP of sales in this industry, a director of it in that industry of CMO in that industry. And with that approach, you're, you're almost forced to be generic. You're forced to say, tell me about your business. You're forced to give a generic elevator pitch. So I guess how, when it comes to relevance for you, how do you prepare for relevance and, and what aspect of relevance, how deep do you go on relevance? Is it, is it industry? Is it role? Is it like, how, how do you slice that up so you can be consistent with a message and have a talk track around it? Yeah, so when I'm making my calls, I'm always calling the same title, which is generally president, yeah. CEO, someone in the C-level. Mm -hmm. And you got to be careful with mm -hmm. that, to your point, because uh, your chief marketing officer is going to have different pain points than your chief IT officer, right? Mm -hmm. So when I'm calling down a list of 100, you can best believe that all of those people on there hold the CEO, president um, title. Yeah. From there, it's it's sort of generally by two things revenue i don't really count because it it's sort of sporadic yeah. um but the other thing i really look at is headcount right so i'm talking to companies that have at least 50 plus people in them they've been around 10 plus years they know their business really well because i find that mm -hmm. um as a salesperson the biggest thing that salespeople um sort of misstep on is you know you call some guy of a manufacturing company and you try to tell him, hey, listen, I know how to run your company better than you do. That's a big slap yeah. in the face, right? Yeah, you think. So you, yeah. when, when you're pitching them, you got you to gotta be cognizant of what you're saying on the phone, right? Yeah. Um, and I feel that some people lose their way, right? So those, those two are really about what I care about. And then depending on who and what I'm after, I'll, I'll look at a geography, but not so much. It really doesn't matter mm -hmm. to me. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's the key. It's like, you don't have to know the details of my job or my day to day, but you better know enough to sound like, you know, what you're talking about. You know what I mean? So it's like, I always said to reps, you know, people ask all the time, like, how do you create urgency? Right. And, and I don't think you can, I don't think we as sales professionals can, but we can uncover it and we can drive it. And the way we do that is by aligning with priorities, right? Like, like when your CEO stood up in the beginning of the year and said, this is what we got to do this year to be success successful. If I can't tie my solution, one or two of those, good luck selling anything of significance, right? But the problem is the way I used to get there was by saying dumb stuff like, oh, tell me about your priorities, right? Whereas now, if I'm calling into CIOs in healthcare, I'm going to do some homework. I'm going to Google or chat GBT. Hey, what are the top priorities of CIOs in healthcare right now? What are some of the big challenges that they're addressed with? And, and what does their day-to-day -day life look like, right? So I can do a little bit of business, you know, learn a little bit of business acumen. So now when I'm calling those people, I don't say tell you about your priorities. I'm like, hey, we're typically working with other CIOs in healthcare. And they're telling us that the top things that are on their plate right now are X, Y, and Z. Are those yours? Even if, even if they're not, it tends to open up the conversation when you show that you know them a little bit and, it, and you at least have some experience with that. So with, with that, from a messaging standpoint, are you specific to that role with your, with your message? Like, do you start with, cause it sounded like you started with once you get that 30 seconds, it's, this is what we're doing with other people like you. Right. And so here's, and, and they're typically faced with these problems. So is it a, is it a pitch and then questions 
or do you dive right into buying a kind of relevant questions to see if that is a problem and then you give them kind of your value statement? Yeah. So I generally stick to the relevance topic. You know, here's what I'm hearing in the market. Here's what previous customers in your segment have told me. Just wanted to reach out, see if you share any of the same pain points they might have. Right. Um, And sometimes they pick up on it. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's a tangent. And this is the one thing my biggest gripe with the cold uh-huh. call is uh, people ask all the time, you know, what's your script? Well, how do you script a, a conversation with another person, right? Yeah, You have to have the yeah. ability to adjust on the fly, right? So mm-hmm. um, to your point and to your question, I have three or four questions that are pretty generic. And as they give me more details, if they give me more details, I'll go with it. But if they don't, they want to mm-hmm. shut down, I shut down with them, right? There's no need to yep. push a conversation with somebody who's not interested in talking to you, right? Yeah. So I was going to say, like, from a handling objection standpoint, do you handle objections, or are you just like, all right, cool, no worries? You know what I mean? Like, I guess what uh, with that mentality of like, look, I don't want to bark up the wrong tree here, but to a certain degree, there's some points where you might want to push back a little bit because they might totally just be blowing you off without even hearing you. So how how do you approach? objection handling when it comes to cold calling and do you just wave up the white flag as soon as it comes up or do you dig a little bit sometimes i definitely dig but what i tell people is we're not paid enough to handle objections right because as soon as you (laughs) come up with an answer uh your prospect is going to find like three more not to deal with you right so (laughs) i definitely dig i look for pain right But if the guy keeps throwing, or a girl keeps throwing up, you know, objection after objection and stonewalling you, I might say something to him like, hey, listen, you said this to me, you said that to me, you said this to me. It doesn't sound like even if I had a magic wand and create your perfect ideal solution, you'd deal with me if I was a last man standing. And some people say no, and you you need to know when to fold them, right? But some people say, well, I didn't say that, and here's my actual problem, and then we can get back into conversation so that's what i mean when you can't really script these things right you just have to kind of go with it so how do you get well let's because i trust me i am anti-script all day long specifically when it comes to cold calling but you know i'm more of a structure guy right like what's the structure of a call like what's the intros and let me play around with some of those what's the reason for my call what's my call to action but but for you know brand new kids on the phone they kind of need a script so how do you onboard new hires to to get to get used to being dynamic enough to be able to carry a conversation with just a few data inputs versus because i that's where i see scripts being somewhat useful is to get somebody started right like you don't know what you don't know right now here's a script. If they say this, go here and go there. Right. But they're very soon thereafter. I think you, you got to make it your own, but how, how do you onboard people um, or get people comfortable to the point where they can just have a conversation that isn't scripted? So me personally, I'm an advocate of this. Um, I have a Google drive that houses <laughs> all types of conversations from ones I booked appointments with ones that I, you know, I got stonewalled by the gatekeeper ones that signed the phone on me, one that just wasn't a good fit. And it's a resource library. So new hires that are going through onboarding can actually go through there and folder by folder listen to these different style calls. By the time they're ready to get on the phone, they have good product knowledge, they have some idea. And if they're really paying attention, something in the resource library might click and they can use it in their... Um, their actual talk track when they're getting on the phone. Now, you got to realize this is generally a three-month process before somebody feels comfortable and nine months before they actually are consistent with the results they produce, right? Um, Mm -hmm. If you you have the tenacity, if you have the guts to actually stick with it, because most people, they they give up on the phone like three months, right? They can't do it. They can't hack it. The rejection's too much, whatever. Um, but that's yeah. generally how I, I structure it so that people feel comfortable. They know that somebody else has made these calls and we're not just coming up with some theory and you're going to be the crash test dummy to test it for the very first time for us. That's not how it yeah. works. Yeah, yeah. And you actually mentioned something there that I think is is something that not enough people put enough weight to when it comes to the value of cold calling still. 
because it could easily be argued, you know, in certain industries that connect rates are so bad and there's no responses. So let's not do it. But the reason I still advocate pretty strongly for it outside of, I think it, it is part of the overall contact strategy and always in, in like from a cadence standpoint, anytime I implement phone onto a cadence, it increases the overall conversion ratios. It might not be the actual conversion ratio, but, but the other thing that I think is, is extremely valuable specifically for new sales reps is the experience of making a cold call and getting through that grind, that three month grind of afterwards being like this man, because sales is a brutal profession, right? And you have to have grit. You have to have tenacity. You have to accept the fact that 99 people out of a hundred are probably going to tell you no. And those ratios don't change much throughout your career. I mean, once you get further cycle sales, you have higher close ratios, but that top end of the funnel the five to eight percent range on that. I mean, if you think of baseball, right? If you're batting three thirty, you know, three hundred, you're going to the, you know, you're going to the All Star game, and you're going to the, you know, uh, <laughs> you're an All Star, right? Where here, if you're batting eight, right? Like if you're batting eight percent, buy any you car know, you want, you're you're actually <laughs> right, you're doing great. But I think there's that tenacity that you have to build that grit factor. So how much do you credit that? Um, in your career, because you went door to door sale in early days, which taught you a lot. Do you think your door to door sales experience of getting door slammed in your face really prepared you for the cold call? Um, yes and no. You know, there was a piece of advice that somebody gave me a long time ago, and I think this changed my perspective on um, rejection and how to handle rejection. And what they told me was this: Look, as a salesperson, you are an actor. And you just happen to be at a Broadway play. And um, yeah. your prospect is your sort of dancing partner here. And sometimes Brother. you're not a fit. And so when five o'clock or seven o'clock or whenever rolls around and you're done for the day, um, you take off your, your play clothes, you hang them on the behind of the door and you go home. And when I got that piece of advice, it made me realize like, when I get rejection, they're not rejecting Jeremy or John as a person. Mm -hmm. They're rejecting the offer because they don't know me, right? All I right, just walked right. in. I just showed up. I just called cold. They don't know me, right? I think the number one mistake that people make is they get in the car at five o'clock when it's time to go home and then they start checking in some of the trash, right? Oh, that guy told me no good. I'm no good. That's, you know, he's probably right. I'm going to... Mm -hmm you know, I'm going to quit my job tomorrow and become a BMW mechanic, right? So mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of people, if they realize that they're actually getting a rejection to the offer and not them as a person, would look at things differently and actually persevere the career. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's the thing. You can't take any of this personal. That's why, you know, it's, I always tell people like, well, the worst thing that could happen to you, the worst thing that could happen to you is to hang up on you. Like that, that's so if you can handle that, well, I'll take that back. The worst thing that can happen is if you're a total douchebag and you do something sleazy, uh, then you, that person could then call you or call your manager and be like that person, you know what I mean? And I've done that before, quite frankly, there's no question about it. I've gotten a dirtbag sales rep to try to call and in, in sneaky and all these different, you know, tactics that they use to get in touch with me. And I was like, uh, and I hung up the phone with them and I called their manager immediately. And it was like, look, are you teaching your reps how to do this? Cause if you're teaching them that, then you're a dirtbag. But if you're not, I just want to get you a heads up that your sales reps, this is what they're doing. And this is degrading the profession. Because if you take that, and this is what I want to get from you is, is this like, yes, actor. Okay. But how do you balance that with authenticity? Because I can be an actor and I can be this, this totally different person, right? That, but, but I think authenticity really matters. So how do you balance those two? Yeah. So as an actor, all I'm saying is, look, I'm putting my emotions behind and this is truly a, a business conversation. I'm still me yeah. that loves the golf and loves cars and loves talking about the weather and yeah. enjoys summer and barbecuing outside and all the rest of it. Right. So it's not oh, like yeah. I lose the element of being a human. All I'm saying yeah. is when you realize that it's simply a rejection to the yeah. offer and it really doesn't matter because you're acting anyway as a representative of your company, five o'clock rolls around, completely forget about it, right? You check out yeah. and move on with your life. So um, yeah. 
a, a lot of people, you know, take that to heart and say, well, I got to be enthusiastic and everything is sunshine and rainbows. I, I've never seen somebody wake up and go to work like that. I mean, unless you're <laughs> one out of a hundred million that really truly loves what you do and you're a Steve Jobs and you just came up with the iPhone, that's fantastic. But for the rest of us, <laughs> right, <laughs> that have to go to work to pay the bills because you got a mortgage and family to take care of, um, bring <laughs> some of that in because it brings the realism to... Hey, listen, I'm a human yeah. too on the other side of this phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do you, so how do you stay motivated? Right. I mean, I think there's the, there's the, the authenticity, there's being an actor, not taking it personally, but then there's the motivation of just coming back day after day after day for this type of stuff. Right. And, and look, I don't care how mentally strong you are. There are plenty of days and I got to imagine for you too. That you just like Jesus, you know what I mean? Like, what a brutal day, and why am I doing this? And like, <laughs> like, what? So, how do you personally stay motivated to keep this up for as many years as you have? Well, there's two things, and um, you know, talk about being real. Um, mm -hmm. The the one thing for me is I don't think um, I could achieve the level of success I've achieved. Uh, in any other profession, right? I was supposed to be an engineer. That's what I went to college for. Yeah, um, yeah. And I know some fantastic people that are engineers, but they make $80,000 and they sit in the office all day. To me, that would be boring. I'd rather watch paint dry. Yeah. Um, I've done some wonderful things in my career and I attribute it all to sales, right? Mm -hmm. And so, um, look, I'm telling my fellow salespeople out there, look, you might be having a bad day, week, month quarter whatever but realize that you can turn this all around and it literally starts with the next call um mm -hmm. and as soon as you realize that like truly internalize that you realize like everything is temporary that guy just told me yeah. to go go fly a kite in the middle of uh traffic fantastic mm -hmm. great really doesn't bother me because i'm on to the next one and i've already forgot about what's his face right so yeah uh i guess the way i would sum that up is it's really an ego thing. Once you drop the ego and you really don't care about the outcome one way or another, you'll, you'll uh -huh. be a lot better off for it. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that comes with a perspective, right? So it's like, you know, at 47 years old, I get that, right? Cause I've been there, done that. And I can, I can really look back at the success of my career and, and, and can tie a lot of it to cold calling and just, you know, whether it was the results of cold calling or, or just the act of cold calling. Right. But I, that's what I, you know, that's why all these, these new kids coming into, into sales, you know, they don't get past that hump. They, 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 they don't see the results. Right. So they don't have that context to say, Hey, you know, it's not about me. It's a, right. So I think they, there's a little bit of mental toughness that they have to figure out and maybe a little bit of guidance from some people who've been there, done that. Uh, which is why it always kills me when I see VPs of sales, right? When you got a VP of sales telling their reps to cold call all day long, but yet they don't even pick up cold calls, right? Or like, and, and or they rip people apart for making cold calls, right? They're like, how dare you call me on my cell phone? It's like, you asshole. You're the exact one who's telling your entire team to make these exact calls and you're not even picking it up. Like I pick up all cold calls because I want to learn. I mean, not only I, like, I think it's a good way to like, okay, cool. There's some cool new shit out there, right? But but also, like, I, I, I appreciate a cold call just like anybody else. It's like, if you get a good one, man, I'm, I'm learning from that. And I'm going to apply that to, to my approach. <laughs> well, it's true. I mean, you have, unfortunately, and I've been victim of it, where I've had management um, folks who um, never did what I did, but then yeah. tried to tell me what I, what I should be yeah. doing. And it's just like, you know, it, it falls on deaf ears. I think our message um, is for the ones that out there that know it works, right? right. Um, and just need to get over the hump. If you think about this, some, one of the greatest basketball, if not the greatest basketball player of all time, Michael Jordan, was cut from That's his right. high school basketball team. right? Yep. And he's still Michael Jordan, right? So yep. um, I think that if people stop living in the moment so much and realize like, hey, you know, this is going to end in 30 seconds um, and I'm on to yep. my next one, you'd be surprised um, how quickly you could turn things around. So. Yeah. A uh, couple of tactical ones. What do you do when somebody says, uh, I, I love this one. Uh, I'm in a meeting right now, right? Somebody picks up the phone and says, I'm in a meeting, which I think is a total bullshit uh, objection because 
I, you know, my mentality is like, you're not in a meeting. Like you, 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 because you're either the rudest person on the planet that just picks up random phone calls in the middle of meetings, or you picked it up and you realized it was a cold call and you didn't want to talk to me. So shut up, you're in a meeting. But wh- wh- what's your tactical response to somebody who's like, oh, I'm sorry, in a meeting right now. Do you just, just bail or do you try to kind of keep them on the phone for a little bit? Well, my mentality is uh, I'm a little bit cheeky and I'm sort of a yeah. garbage in, garbage out type guy. So um, yeah. if somebody tells me they're in a meeting, I go, hey, I'm in one too. Do you got 30 seconds? <laughs> keep nice. on, yeah. keep it on. So. Yeah. I actually, I've tried this one recently and I think that actually sometimes it works. It doesn't, but but that's a, that's a tough one because it's hard to get through that anyways. But I'll do this one. I'll be like, oh, is the meeting that boring that you came out to pick up a random ass cold call? Because if it is, I'm help, I'll help you out. I'll give you an excuse to get out of that meeting, right? And you'll hear them be like, ah, all right, right? Because I mean, because I'm calling you out, right? Because you're like, oh, I'm in a meeting right now. Oh man, is it that boring that you just picked up a random ass cold call in the middle of it? Holy crap. Look, if you need an excuse to get out of this thing, man, I'll be your guy. So give me like, give me just five minutes and I promise you I'll get you out of that bullshit meeting, right? And then, and, and yeah, and then they laugh about it, and they're like, "All right, you know, what do you want to talk about?" So, um, what about the uh, what about the what about the old uh, where'd you get my number? Like, how do you, how'd you get my number? Like, do you do you dance around that one, or do you come straight at it with exactly where you got it? Yeah, I tell them straight up. You know, I bought your phone number. I got it on Google, whatever. Um, and yeah. people are just like, you know, recently, actually, the just this morning. A guy told me, really? My phone number's out there? I said, yeah. And he sat there and put it into Google while I was in the phone. And he goes, holy crap, yeah. it is out there. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Yeah, so, there you go. Um, you know what? Yeah, honesty I, is the best policy. Definitely. I, I even tell him I'll take him off the list too. Like, I'll be like, hey, look, we get it through a list service and I'll name whatever the list service is. And if you want, I'll be happy to request that that list service take your name off there. With that said, do you have five minutes so I can, you know what? And so I'll address it, but then I'll move right into like, try to parlay that into the conversation. Right. So it's like, yep, this is where I got it. And I'm happy to help you out. If you do, if you're pissed off about that, would you give me five minutes, you know, and just move into it. And it usually I get the yeah all right because I'm I'm kind of like hey cool if you're if you're that mad that your phone number's out there I'll happily tell whatever service it is. That said, would you be open to this call? You know what? It, that's a great approach. I just always found it funny. Like you're a business, you're clearly operating in or at a business. Um, why be mad that you know your contact information yeah. is out there? It means that you're doing something correct anyway. So. People that right. ask where you got my number from, it's like, where do you, where did you want me yeah. to get it from? <laughs> right. It's like, well, it's like the early days of LinkedIn people. You're not even early days, but still some people are like, you know, uh, were you looking at me on LinkedIn? Yeah, I was. And if you don't want me to, then don't put your shit on LinkedIn, asshole. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's a public thing that you put your information there. Like, why would you not want me to use that information and be as relevant as possible when I make this call to you? So that's it. Always cracks me up when people get mad about the fact that their their information's out there or their te- you know, phone is like, good lord, dude, do you really live in the real world at this point? Well, yeah, I don't know. People just put themselves in silos, and that's fine. They're not my people, and yeah. you know what? To that same point, I've had people tell me that that they can't stand me, but still bought from me. So it makes no yeah. difference to me at the end yeah. of the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we're coming up on time here, Jeremy. Any other like small tactical things that you think are, are, are good for the audience to know about uh, with different ideas or tips or things that you do that's a little unique that drives results for you? You know what? The one thing that I'll tell your audience um, and whoever might pick this up along the way is remember that when you're making the cold call, you're not selling on the phone unless you're like a one call yeah. close type company. That's fantastic. Very rare nowadays. Yeah. Um, so just remember to go go for the appointment if they're interested they're engaging in conversation just ask them hey listen you know you got some time this week we can pull out a calendar set up half an hour um i see a lot of reps today just trying to uh you know sell over the phone uh, they get one guy that answers the phone and, and they just bombard them right so just remember yeah. what you're there for yeah i like that you know i always tell people you're not again you're not selling your solution you're not selling your products you're selling time you're selling the next step that's what you're selling, right? And if you can chunk it out, even in that call, again, those first five seconds get 30, that 30 gets two minutes, that two minutes earns that meeting. So awesome, Jeremy. We'll tell people where you can find a little bit more information about what you're working on these days. Hey, check me out at jeremychensales.com or um, just the same on LinkedIn, Jeremy Chen. Uh, you can follow me there. I don't really post too much. And if I don't respond to you, I'm sorry, marketers have ruined the platform in my opinion. But uh, um, if you got a real <laughs> yeah. legit question, reach out to me. 
I'll do my best to respond. Love it. Awesome, Jeremy. I appreciate you coming on, man. It was a fun conversation. Hey, John. Thanks for having me. Definitely. And everybody else out there, hopefully you picked up a couple of tactics. And if you haven't been making calls recently, get on the phones. It's uh, it's fun. It's a good way to practice and, you know, uh, humble yourself a little bit, but also hopefully drive some business. And because so few reps are doing it these days, it is a way for you to differentiate yourself and stand out. Um, and with that, like I tell everybody all the time, look at the end of all these podcasts, go out there and make somebody smile today because no matter how bad your day is going or you think it's going, if you make somebody smile today, you know, you had a good day and the world needs a lot more of that right now. So thank you all very much. And I'll see you on the other side. I hope you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. With your support and our incredible guests, we're one of the top sales podcasts out there right now, and I can't thank you enough. Now, to keep the momentum going, it would mean the world to me if you could go and leave a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform and share some of your favorite episodes with your network. Also, check out my new website at www.johnmmichaelbarrows.com, where you'll find even more ways to engage. There's a ton of free content, and you can also get trained from me directly as an individual or for your team. Look, I'm out there selling every day just like you are, and I'm doing my best to stay on top of all the latest trends in technology. So if you're looking to level up and you give a shit about this profession of sales, let's connect and let's make this happen together. 